how to use Calendly, Calendly tutorial. Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we'll be doing a quick look at Calendly and how you can get started with using Calendly as your appointment scheduler and so much more. So let's get into it. Now, what exactly does Calendly entail and what can you really get out of this platform? Well, you can create your online booking and scheduling system. You can also create team bookings as well as group integrations. You can create group meetings as well. You can basically manage your entire uh, appointment system and booking system with Calendly. And you also have some integrations that can enable you to sync this with your Google Calendar as well as embed it into online places like Zoom or Microsoft where you can schedule your meetings as well. So let's get into using Calendly. Now, to get started, all you have to do is head on over to Calendly.com. Once you are on Calendly.com, just click on Get Started on the top right over here. And once you do, you just enter your email address to get started. I already have an account, so I'm just going to sign in with Google. You can use Google to sign in, and this will also ask you if you want to allow Calendly to sync up with your Google Calendar. So if you want Calendly to sync up with your Google Calendar, you can also do that. Now let's get started into the basic interface of Calendly. So this is what Calendly is going to look like. On your top right, you're going to have your account settings. If you click on that, then you will find your name. This is going to be your business name. So you can change it to whatever you want. I am going to just change it to Jane Doe. And then you have your welcome message. So welcome to my scheduling page. Please follow the instructions to add an event to my calendar but we want it to be slightly different. Let's say we are running a uh, clinic and we want this to be a um, therapy session or something. So uh, like, let's say it's like a clinic. So we want a more professional sounding message. So let's say we want this to be our message. You can enter, you know, more information, but I'm just going to save it for now. Now, after that, you have a branding section as well. So in this section, you can add your logo image. You can also add it to all users in your organization. Obviously, people can, you know, book with multiple different people over here as well. So you also have those options. Then you have your calendar connections. Now, you can sync this with any of your pre-existing calendars. If you want to do it with your Google account, you can also click on add calendar account. And we can just go on ahead and upgrade our program and you can, you know, integrate with multiple different calendars, but I don't need to upgrade right now. And then if I go on to my home section over here, you guys will see your event types, your scheduled events, whatever you have upcoming. Then you have a workflow and for workflows, you do have to upgrade to a premium version of Calendly. And then you have routing. So, or routing, whatever you might want to call it. This is also a premium feature, which allows you to set up form questions and logic invitees as well. Now, let's get started with creating a basic event. So, if you click on event types or just click on create on the top right over here, you have three basic types of event. First off, you have a meeting poll, which can help you in analyzing the overall availabilities if you want to do a group meeting. And you can, you know, do multiple different options over here. Then you have a one-off meeting or a event type. Now, uh, if you're doing bookings on this, you definitely want to use event type. And then you can do a one-off meeting or meeting polls with people that are, you know, fellow members of your business that you want to hold meetings with. Now, let's create a event type. And then within event types, you have multiple different types. So you have a one-on-one, -on -one, a one-in-group, a one-in-collective, and a robin round. So uh, let's say we want to do a one-on-one -on -one because this is a therapy clinic. We would name this event spe something specific. So let's say it's consultation and then you can add your location over here. And then you're going to add the uh, description or prerequisite. So if these are, let's say if it's a lash appointment and people are supposed to, you know, come with their lashes clean or if it's a nail appointment and people are supposed to come with, you know, uh, their nails prepped, you know, whatever it might be. You want to add those instructions over here and provide a detailed uh, explanation of what kind of uh, consultation or appointment this is. So let's say we are doing a basic mental health consultation for your well-being. I definitely do recommend you make this four lines or longer at least. Then you have your event link. So your event link is going to be calendly.com slash your username or your email address that you sign up with. And then the next thing is going to be one word that you can add. I'm going to add consultation and I'm going to make this a lime green. 
And now I'm just going to click on next over here. Once I click on next, I will be able to see my booking schedule. So I want people to be able to book 30 days into the future. And I don't want it to exceed that because I don't want to, you know, take appointments for a year ahead. And, you know, I don't even know if a year later I'm going to be doing the same thing. So I like to keep it to 30 days. Then you have the duration. So let's say a basic consultation is going to take 15 minutes. Then below that, you have your custom hours or existing schedule. I have previously created a existing schedule. You can use any schedule you want. You can click on set custom hours and save it as a new schedule. So let's say we don't do Sundays, it will show up as unavailable. Then let's say we work on Mondays from 9 a.m. So I'm going to select 9 a.m. over here. And then let's say we work from 9 to p.m. like this. But then after that, we take like a two hour break. So I would, uh, you know, just click on the plus icon on the top right over here. And then I would just click on 4 p.m. Let's say we resume work at 4 and then we work till 9 or 8 like this. So now I've just added my custom times. And what you can do is just duplicate these times for your entire week as well. If you have, if you're following the same schedule and just click on apply, all these times would be applied. If you have a different break schedule for different days, you can add them uh, by yourself as well. You can remove this, click on the plus icon once more and add your customized times as well. So after that, you can see once you have your basic availability hours, you can save this as a schedule. So you can just add or, you know, you can just get this copied and pasted onto the next event that you do create. It's just easier that way. Then you can also choose to add buffer times. Let's say I want to add a buffer time or just five minutes before and after. So I think that's a pretty good buffer time. And then you also have additional rules for availability. So let's say I want to show the starting times in increments of 30 minutes and then I don't want people to be able to book me for eight hours before an event time. So that basically allows me a little bit of a buffer time and let's say for one day I take maximum of five of these types of event. Maybe it's too over exhausting if I take more than five or you know you might just have some limitations why you can't take more of a certain type of event. Now below that you also have time zone displays so you have time zone and then you have your uh, secret events as well but I don't want to make this secret I want this to show on my page. Once this has been completed you can go on to your home section and you will be able to see the event that you have. You can click on view booking page over here to see what it currently looks like. You guys can see all the availability dates and the availability dates are showing one month ahead. But after that, we don't have any availability dates because that's how I set it up. Then you can see this is what it does when you ask it to show in increments of 30 minutes. So uh, you can either book for 12, 1230, 1, 1, you know, a 4, 435, 530 you know, like this. So it's in increments of 30 minutes. So in this way, you can get started with Calendly. Now, although Calendly is a great app to use for, you know, your basic scheduling, you can really upgrade the features with their premium plan starting only at $8 per seat per month, where you can add two calendars, create unlimited event types, invite uh, you know, send email reminders to the people that are booking you. And then the professional version at $12 per seat per month allows you to create your customized logo, card, branding, as well as analytics, insight, managed events, automated workflows, and uh, so much more. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and I will catch you guys in the next video.